Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode and insightful episode of Me and My Health Up. I'm your host, Anthony Harcher. I'm a clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being. And today, I'll be doing that just for you. We're going to be talking about the power of food. So yes, we're going to get dig and dig and dig into nutrition and uh, help empower you with nutritional fundamentals. So yes, we're going to do away with the fads and get down to the basics of good nutrition and so that you can be empowered by food. So let's get into the episode. In this episode, I'll be covering the common pitfalls, so where people typically go wrong with nutrition, and secondly, how to nourish your body for optimal performance. Yes, optimal performance. So that's what we're going to be talking about, and let's get right into this episode. So first of all, the common pitfalls. So essentially, We get so much information. We're inundated with information coming from the internet, from the media, all sorts of media, social media, influencers. They're coming from left, right and center. And a lot of the time it's questionable on how credible is the information. Is the information actually got any science behind it? Does it actually work? Or is it this influencer who is just trying to make money. And we see many, well, I've certainly seen on recent occasions where influencers have been caught out in terms of lying. Uh, So lying about how they've achieved the body. Uh, There was this guy that was claiming he got this massive physique. uh, So this really, really muscular physique from eating liver um, from eating animal organs and he was claiming it was a direct result he had this six pack and big bulky muscles from eating animal organs and eating them raw and it was very it looked very disgusting but it certainly attracted a large following and pro- probably these people started to eat organs and started to eat raw food and whatnot and really endangering their health because as you know with uh, raw food can come many forms of bacteria and some forms of bacteria that can make us very sick so essentially he was claiming that made him really big and physique and muscular but what we realized and he came out and admitted in the end was that he was using steroids so steroids was another contributing factor and probably the main contributing factor as to how he achieved that physique but he misled followers and this isn't the first influencer to do that there are many and they all they you know generally get caught out so whenever you get information in Think about, is a credible source of information? Is a trustworthy source of information? Is it got, has it got any scientific backing? Where does it come from? So start doing your own investigation. Dig a bit deeper and see if there's any evidence base behind it. So you can go into Google Scholar. So type in Google Scholar into your Chrome browser and up will come a search bar that will cert, that will basically search scientific articles. And so you could Google the title of what they're claiming and see what comes up. See what literature is out there that's actually had studies, trials done to see whether it actually works. Because you don't want to be misled. That's the most common probably pitfall is this misled information from the media, from social media, from influencers where they're they're claiming that this gave me this, so a a direct influence or direct causation that that if you do this, you will get this result. And it's generally not a direct causation. It's generally a number of contributing factors that lead to that result. And that's what we see time and time again with health is that optimal health is a contribution of things done constantly, consistently, compounded over time in numerous areas of wellness that result in that ultimate outcome. So don't be misled by influences and always question the source. Is it credible? Should I be listening to this person? Should I believe them? Like friends, for example, another source of misinformation. You know, they will say, look, I did this and look what the results I got and and directly say as a result of 
doing this, I got this, but not necessarily true. They're probably doing a whole lot of other things as well. They won't tell you the full picture. So ask questions about exactly what they were doing. And then also, is that result that they've obtained, is that something that you really desire? Is it within you? Is it a link to your values? And again, we've had a number of conversations on these values in previous episodes. Like, is it really important to you? Or is it just something that you fantasize about and wish for, but really deep down, it's not that important and you don't really want, you don't really desire it, you're not gonna really do it. So always question is, is it something that you want? I typically get a lot of clients that see me for weight loss and they've been on this journey, tried many different things and it just hasn't worked. And again, they've got a part of the story, but not the full story in terms of what's involved, what needs to be done in order to get that result. And the most important thing that everyone is unique and individual. You have a complete unique genome, right? It's it's why you're here on this earth. You, you, you're here for a special reason. And that special reason is to be you and to be the most authentic version of you and to live by what's important to you and to stand out and to lead and to really showcase to the world what value you can add and how you can empower others and support others on their journey. So don't be carried away by the influencers, okay? Again, I was watching a documentary with Chris, Chris Emsworth and he was doing all these extreme things, okay? And saying, oh, it's really vital. And, and then just grabbing snippets of uh, evidence and saying it supports this or whatever, and and but not really putting it into context and giving the full picture, but just sort of proving his point, uh, but not really with real credible sources, but just sort of, you know, again, it's all about drama. It's all about sense, sense, sense being sensational to attract and get that sort of view following and that um, and to essentially sell something at the end of it, uh, whether you're doing a documentary, you're getting paid to do that documentary, or what's the incentive for them? And again, are you going to do everything that they, they did in order to get there? And you generally don't get everything they did in the documentary, you just get part of it and you don't understand the full picture. So again, ask questions and really seek expert, you know, seek experts help in the area that you're wanting to excel in, as opposed to getting it off documentaries that are one sided that aren't well backed, or getting it from influencers that claim that they've got this result from doing this, but there's probably a whole no another story to it. Again, you need to look and investigate, make sure you get a, a better picture of what's going on. And then question as to whether it's something that you really want to do, and it's aligned to what you desire, essentially. So that's where a lot of people trip up is that they follow these TikTok sensations or these uh, viral things, or they get on the latest bandwagon or latest trend and not understand the full context or the full context of what's behind it. So again, a lot of studies are done over a much longer duration than what you perceive that you could get away with doing it. Like you essentially may jump on at some sort of intermittent fasting, for example, and do it for a week and say, we didn't get results. But then the studies have been conducted over six to 12 weeks and the results come in time. And, it, and it most likely after that adjustment period, which is generally one to two weeks. Um, so if you don't stick with something long enough, then you may not get the results. And the studies are typically conducted over a much longer time frame. There's very few studies that are conducted in, within a very short time frame. Again, the body needs to adjust to the change and the body needs to get back into a balanced state in order for things to correct, uh, such as if you're trying to improve your blood sugars or trying to improve your blood lipids or whatever you're trying to improve, whether it be weight loss, again, you need to allow time to play out and be very consistent and make sure what you're doing has evidence base behind it, that it is proven to work um, with the general population. Again, it might not work for you because you're unique and special and you may need something very tailored to you. So make sure that what you're seeking is aligned to your health goals and that you really want that. Uh, that way it'll be, you'll have motivation from within as opposed to needing external motivation. 
Another point to this common pitfalls is too impatient. I mentioned that before, people don't do it long enough. They just expect results, immediate results, quick results. As I said, most of the studies are done over a longer duration, around that six to 12 weeks, some are done over six months or over a three months duration or over a 12 months duration. So it's important to understand where the information comes from, the, credi you know, the credibility of the source, and then understand the, the study, the trial that was done. And you don't wanna do this legwork, then pay an expert that has done the legwork. That's key. You, you, you don't have to do it if, it if it's not of interest to you, but it's interest of you to get the results and to find out how to get them and what is the evidence base behind it in terms of getting that result that you seek and desire. And I mentioned that adjustment period. Remember, the body needs to get back into a balanced state before it can then go forward and start to heal and help you. Like, so for example, if your blood sugars, blood sugars are all over the place, uh, you've got some sort of insulin resistance, then it takes time for that to improve and then you'll start to see results. So the body needs to get that back in the balance first and then the results will come, such as if you're seeking weight loss. <laughs> so allow time, time is key uh, to getting a success. So let's get into the next common pitfalls. And the other one I see is this more is best. Well, what I say about that is that it depends, okay? It really depends. Uh, and again, it depends on the individual, uh, who you are, uh, where you're coming from, how quickly you want the results and what the studies will show generally there is an optimal time frame an optimal dosage and again even health what is considered or labeled healthy is toxic in really high excessive quantities right so toxicity is very much dose dependent and so you can have like water for example can be toxic at certain volumes of consumption. So around that 10 liters of, of water is toxic to the body within a short time frame. So just remember, it's not necessarily longer is best. So don't think that when you're doing a fast that if you fast for longer, it's better. Okay, it might not be better that there, there is an optimal window. And I did an episode on this uh, and, it, and it was around optimizing fasting and how to go about that. Uh, so there is an episode I did previously around fasting. So I'll include a link to that episode in the show notes. And again, who I interviewed is an expert in the field. He has done huge amounts of research and his own studies and trials in this area to come up with helping his clients work with what is the optimal fasting for you in terms of your results. So that might be an episode worth listening to if fasting is something you want to do. But just remember, as he said, fasting for longer is not necessarily better. And again, that applies across the board. It is generally a Goldilocks principle. Not too much, not too little, just right. And again, just right is going to be different for everyone because you're unique and special and individual and hence you need something tailored to you. And I did another episode with a nutritional scientist and I asked them, what's the future of nutritional medicine? And they said, personalization, okay? So it's very much getting into and working out what's best for that person. Fasting doesn't work across the board. It's not a one size fits all. There's nothing out there that's a one size fits all. As we know with medication, it's probably around that 50% success rate, okay, in terms of supporting, helping, and people getting consistent results. Uh, could be a little higher with some drugs, a little less with some drugs, but generally it's never a one size fits all. So, Fat is bad, that's another common pitfall is, and we went through this over the previous decades where we 
demonized fat. So in the 1970s, it was considered that fat was making people sick and unwell and uh, making them put on weight. That was the what we believed back then in terms of what they knew at the time. As we know now that it's now no longer demonized, fat's no longer that bad, and now carbs is now the devil. So <laughs> remember that science is constantly evolving. More and more studies are being done. Some of these claims that are put out are really trying to sell something too. And that's, you've got to understand that political bodies, governments can be supporting particular industries that are lobbying for more wheat to be sold or more sugar to be sold. The sugar, protect the sugar industry. We need protection. It, 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 gives so many jobs and the government's thinking, oh, we, we better protect these workers and their jobs, so we better support the industry. Let's change the food pyramid. I'm not saying that has happened, but it's a possibility, right? Um, so governments are influenced by lobbyists. And again, you gotta start questioning. If we once said that fat is bad and we realized that fat wasn't that bad because we got sicker regardless of eating less fat. Now we're saying we're getting fatter and less healthier because of too much carbohydrates, excessive carbohydrates. So carbs are the devil now, they're evil. Well, what we'll find out is the car, and we already know this, it's not what we'll find out, we already know that carbs isn't the devil or carbs aren't evil, it's excessive consumption. Again, it get back to the Goldilocks principle. Not too much, not too little, just right. And again, that's going to be different from everyone, depending on your health goals, depending on your weight, depending on your level of activity, depending on your rate of metabolism, uh, your body type, your constitution, all these things, your sleep, <laughs> all these things play into it, the amount of stress, how well you manage your stress. Again, they're all influencing factors. So carbs aren't evil, it's excessive, it's excessive eating. It's too much calories is making us sick, is making us fat. It's not necessarily carbs or the fats. We just like to pinpoint and blame things, but it's generally contribution of factors. I remember doing this study back at university where I actually studied the causations of weight gain or obesity. And what I found, there was this study, this meta-analysis study, and it concluded that was over, I think there was over 108 causation factors that contributed to weight gain, contributed to obesity in society, 108. And that was back then. So that was, you know, back then, probably around four to six years ago. So imagine what we know now, there's, there's additional ones now, right? So there's many, there's a multitude of factors that, that contribute to weight gain. And again, it, it very much needs to be addressed at that personalized level. What is causing your weight gain? It's not necessarily the answer is just to eat less carbs, uh, depending, it may be, it might not be. Uh, fat, again, fat, we, we know it's more dependent on the type of fat. Uh, so where the studies show that polyunsaturated fats, the omega-3s, and the monounsaturated fats are considered the better fats or the fats that are more supportive than excessive consumption of saturated fats. Again, saturated fats in moderation are okay. It's just excessive consumption. And I just did this episode recently, right, with Udo Erasmus, and it was on, he's a fat expert. So we spoke about fats and it, wasn't the, again, the, yeah, the type of fats matter, but also the source of the fats. So the, the source of the oil and how it's processed. So we got into the processing and the over-processing of oils is causing unhealthiness or causing uh, health problems. Uh, so that's another great episode to listen to. So I'll include that link in the show notes as well. Uh, so there's, Many contributing factors to, I guess, sickness or undesirable health results. And to blame one area, again, 
it's there's correlations and there's going to be a multitude of areas and i see this time and time again with my clients that are contributing to their undesirable health outcome my job is to unravel that and to work out what are the main factors start helping the client address them and then eventually getting around to the other areas so you want to start thinking about what are the areas that are really contributing to your and if you don't know then seek an expert's help but don't just point the finger and think, oh, you know, low carbs is the answer. It's going to solve all my problems. Or, yeah, going uh, low fat or just cutting out fats is going to solve my problem. Or just fast for longer is going to solve my problem. When you do anything to any extreme, it's going to cause problems, okay? we What needs to be done is consulting expert help or getting people that know uh, based on the evidence that can support you based on your health goals and can really tailor the solutions to what you're seeking. Or if you want to do it yourself, that is fine, but get, dig into the research, okay? Dig deep into the studies and the studies will reveal how long they were conducted for, what dosage they use with the participants, were the participants male or female? Sometimes studies are just done on all male. Well, they, then if you're female, I wouldn't jump on that bad wagon because where's the evidence that it supports females, okay? So again, who's the study done on? How many people? Is it just a small population? Well, is it indicative of a greater population? Probably not, okay? And what sort of state of health were they like going into the study? Are they like you? <laughs> How much like you are those participants, okay? And what else did they do? what else was what was the control and you know what was the difference in terms of what they changed and and what they measured how they measured it okay so that's if you want to do it yourself or you just seek an expert's help <laughs> okay now let's get into how we can nourish your body the second part which is all about optimizing your health and well-being it really starts with a mindset right as you know Mindset is so important to overall wellness. Okay, we can, if we don't have a mindset that's working for us, that works against us, then it can sabotage the results. So I want you to think about, are you seeking food and nourishment for performance or for pleasure? Okay, so if you're just seeking food for pleasure and for pleasure only, then that's pretty much what you'll get from food, right? You'll get lots of pleasure. <laughs> but the performance may be lacking, uh, depending on what you associate is foods that give you pleasure, right? What's the association with pleasure? What sort of foods give you pleasure? So again, this asks, you know, I ask the question of you, do you eat to live or do you live to eat? Again, that's going to work with you or work against you. If you're eating to live and to live an optimal, healthy life, then you then the next bit of what I'm sharing is going to be really helpful for you. But if you're living to eat, then that's going to be challenging, okay? Because I'd say most likely you're just living for pleasurable foods and those pleasurable foods that taste great are generally formulated in a way that tastes really, really good and are addictive. But, and because they're addictive, you eat too much of them and it generally results in undesirable health outcomes. So ask yourself, are you living to eat for optimal performance or you are here? So is it eat to live or live to eat? <laughs> so that's the question, okay? Um, I eat to live for optimal performance or are you living just to eat? Um, so again, what's your goal around mindset? The other area is if you're feeling unfulfilled because of you're doing things that aren't aligned to your values and you're not doing what's important to you and you're living other people's values and doing what's important for them, and again, subordinating yourself to them, looking up to them, putting yourself down and not living what's true to you, 
then you're going to be looking for fulfillment in other areas. And one of these other areas could be food. And if you're looking for fulfillment, you're going to go for the foods that give you that pleasure response, that dopamine hit, okay? Those dopamine hit sort of areas are foods that are high in sugar, foods that are addictive, such as alcohol, sugar, uh, caffeine, these sort of things are really going to hit the dopamine and make and put you on a high, but if done in excessive consumption, will bring ultimately undesirable health outcomes. So question your mindset. If you need help in this area, I can certainly help you in terms of breaking this emotional eating so that you can eat for optimal performance. You can still enjoy food. I enjoy food, but I ultimately are doing it to fuel me. And so I'm looking for in food that's going to f- fulfill me in terms of giving me optimal performance, but also I'm looking for taste. But it's not just all about taste. There's that element of nourishing the body and getting what's right for the body for my optimal performance so that I can achieve my health outcomes. Okay, again, your health outcomes may be different to mine, but this is where you get an expert to help tailor it to you. That's really key is if you're stuck and you're needing that personalization, then seek an expert's help. And I certainly know someone who can help you. <laughs> I know a clinical nutritionist that hosts the Me and My Health Up podcast. Uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a plug for me, but uh, hey, I'm here for you, as you know. So the other one is water. Are you drinking enough water? Again, we get carried away with all these latest fads, but we forget the basics. Water, we need water. We can do longer without food and less without water. Okay, we, 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 we can't go as long without water as what we can go without food. F- water is essential. It is a foundation. So make sure you're drinking enough water. Drink it regularly, particularly in hot months. You need to be drinking more. So the the optimal sort of amount is about 35 mils per kilogram of body weight. So so for a 70 kilo person, then it's about just over two liters, okay? And then for exercise, for every hour of exercise, you're looking to add at least another 500 mils, depending on the intensity of exercise. There's so many dependables, (laughs) right? So again, you might need an expert's help. So... The other one is air. Are you breathing properly to actually burn the fuel for optimal performance? We need oxygen. We need oxygenated blood that can then take it to the cells for combustion of food, right? Combustion with food. And that gives us our energy output, our aerobic energy output, okay? So making sure you're breathing properly, nasal breathing. Again, I did an episode on this as well. (laughs) I must include the link in the show notes. So we spoke about nasal breathing and the importance of nasal breathing and what you can do to help your nasal breathing, okay? So um, again, are you breathing through the nose or are you mouth breathing? Through nose breathing, you'll get a lot better uptake of oxygen, okay? And you'll get a much better balance of oxygen, carbon carbon dioxide in your blood, uh, which results in the right alkalinity, acid alkaline balance. Okay. So again, breathing, making sure you're not stress breathing and breathing shallow and fast, rapid through the day. Make sure you're, you know, taking a nice expansive diaphragmatic breaths. Okay. Really important. Oxygen. Remember the basics need to get the basics right. Movement, are you moving your body again? So water combined with movement will help the getting the waste products out of the body. Okay, I did an episode on the lymphatic system and the importance of moving to move then the lymph fluid that carries waste products, okay? We need to move the body to get waste products from combustion, from when you're making energy, you produce byproducts and uh, we need to get the waste products out of our body. So it's really important you move. And so the other thing that helps with that movement that supports that lymphatic drainage is water consumption, okay? So you need water to help flush out the toxins. You need to move the body to flush out the toxins. You need air 
for combustion to create the energy. So you need these fundamentals, the basics, get the basics right. And then we can start worrying about the real micros of nutrition. Sleep, are you getting enough sleep? (laughs) Essentially, sleep is vital for the recuperation of the body, for the cellular turnover, to get rid of, to exterminate cells that are mutant, uh, that we don't want those mutant cells growing and growing and growing and overtaking the body, right? We want to exterminate those mutant cells or those mutations. So we do that when we're sleeping. Our immune system's active. It's exterminating these cells that are demorphed, (laughs) that are are deformed, that are uh, no longer going to give us optimal performance. That's where the immune system's active and destroying these cells autophagy autophagy is the word right so you know that's when we sleep so essentially that's the repair cycle we essentially we're repairing our body for optimal performance again optimal cellular performance will need sleep it needs regeneration okay we want to be regenerating so that we this each cell is ready for action can actually do can give you optimal output if it's defunctional (laughs) and needs terminating and it's not terminated because you're not sleeping and so that isn't that cycle's not working well then these cells are not going to be optimal for optimal performance so making sure you're getting sleep and the way to test whether you're getting good sleep are you waking refreshed without coffee okay are you getting up and you're full of beans or do you need coffee if you need coffee then that means you're probably, if you're desperate for coffee, I could say that you haven't had a restorative night's sleep or meant you've got issues with your sleep that you need to correct. Again, these are all the fundamentals of good health, okay? So you wanna get the fundamentals right before you start focusing on other areas and certainly fads, get your fundamentals right. And they're the building blocks for good health. Okay, so if we, uh, eating well okay we're breathing well we are sleeping okay and we're moving the body we've got those four pieces of the puzzle now we want to make sure we're giving ourselves optimal fuel not fuel that's going to not give us suboptimal performance like e10 at the browser like ethanol you know ethanol diluted fuel at the browser at the bowser bowser (laughs) so and again, it's you want high octane fuel, right? You want fuel that's really going to give maximum performance. So what is this? It's fresh natural produce. Fresh natural produce contains optimal amounts of vitamins and minerals. So if you're eating regular amounts of natural produce that isn't extremely processed, uh, so closest to the source as possible, um, and not sabotaged and refined and refined and refined, then you have optimal vitamins, minerals, okay? You got good amount of fiber. Again, fiber is really important for our microbiome health, our gut health. It's really important. It's really important to keep our bowels moving and that bowel movements is getting out waste products, okay? We don't want waste products accumulating in our system because that's gonna slow us down. Okay, it's not, it's like a car being choked up and not able to get the exhaust out. Eventually, the engine won't work if it can't get the byproducts out of the system. We're the same. We need to be making sure we're getting our byproducts out so that we get optimal performance. So, making sure you're eating plenty of fresh, natural produce, closest, uh, you know, close source food, make sure it's locally sourced. That way, because over time, time and temperature will cause the uh, less, of course, basically reduce the amount of minerals and vitamins that are available to you. The bioavailability of minerals and vitamins through having long supply chains. So making sure the source of what you're buying in terms of the natural produce is close to you, less travel time, better for the environment, better for you. Again, fresh natural produce. It's good, you know, it's, it serves the environment. <laughs> it's, it's creating, uh, putting 
oxygen uh, into the atmosphere that you need to fuel yourself, taking away our waste products, which is carbon dioxide, and then turning them into oxygen. So we work well with plants, right? We need one another. Um, it's a symbiotic relationship. The other basic thing that's often overlooked is chewing your food, okay? Again, digestion starts at the mouth. Maximum taste, the enjoyment of food is at the mouth, okay? So making sure you chew your food, chew it till it's liquid, okay? So it, again, you might be chewing more than 20 times, I'd say at least, you know, and depending on what it is, if it's like something that's very fibrous, then it's more than 20 times. So depending on the amount of processing and how fibrous it is and how much protein content, you might need to chew up to 60 times. It needs to be completely liquid. And again, why not do that? Because that's where the enjoyment of food is, is in the mouth. Okay, so enjoy it. And the other thing about eating slowly and chewing your food is it's allowing the body to register what's going in and send signals back to the brain of whether you're satisfied. If you eat really fast, by the time the signals get back to your brain, you've overdone it, you've overshoot, you've overshot, you've eaten too much, you've excessive consumption. Again, excessive consumption is making us unhealthy. Excess of anything is unhealthy. Too little of it is you know, also not great. We want to be just right. So in order to get that just right consumption for you, eat slowly so you get the signal back to tell you that you're satisfied, okay? So that's leptin. So I said the leptin will be generated and registered by your brain to say, look, no, the cells are happy. The body's happy. It's got what it's needed. You can then move on to other things and fuel your day with energy, okay? So eat slowly. It's typically where I see a lot of my clients go wrong is that they're eating so quickly and the foods that you, you can eat really quickly are foods that are heavily processed. And so you overindulge in these heavily processed foods in order to get satisfied, but you go beyond satisfaction because you're eating so fast. So eat slowly. Again, eat with someone, eat mindfully. The more mindful, more mindful you are around your eating, the less you'll eat, the more satisfied you'll be, the more enjoyment and fulfillment you'll have. You'll get the same fulfillment from having two pieces of chocolate as the whole in eating the entire block when you're mindful, only when you're mindful. When you're not mindful and your mind's distracted and focused on something else such as television or something else, then you won't register and be fully present with what you're, and you won't enjoy, and hence you'll need more to get that enjoyment. And again, then you'll have the whole block and then you'll think, I didn't really need that whole block. It's taking me away from my health goals, okay? That was undesirable. And then you start sabotaging and start beating yourself up. That's unhealthy for the body. It creates a stress response. Again, we don't want that. We want to keep you in balance for optimal performance. So eat and chew. Eat until your food's liquid. Eat slowly, mindfully, with full consciousness and full focus on what you're doing. Enjoy the food, embrace it. Enjoy it with good company, good conversation. Eat the same time every day. Our bodies are creatures a habit and it's going to be optimal in terms of digestion to eat at the same time every day. And again, it's allowing breaks for the digestion system throughout the day. It's not eating continuously. Continuous eating is not good for anyone unless you're a type one diabetic. And again, that should be done under supervision in terms of making sure you maintain proper blood glucose uh, whilst you're um, taking in insulin. So if you're type one diabetic, then disregard this. But if you're not a type one diabetic uh, and you're looking for general health advice, again, this is not specific to your circumstances, you're looking for general health advice, is to allow gaps at least four hours between eating, okay? Four hours will allow the digestion to complete itself, okay? So four hours, uh, so don't eat continuously because that just overwhelms the digestive system and you'll get the digestive distress, you'll get reflux, you'll get heartburn, you'll feel bloated, you'll feel nothing's digesting because you're not allowing the digestion time any time to rest. 
So don't constantly flood it with food and overwork it. Allow it time to relax and, di- and actually do the work, digest and give you fuel. Again, eating too much will make you feel lethargic. Eating just right will give you energy. You'll feel energized. So, re- and, it, and again, if you eat a little bit less than what you think is just right, you'll find you'll probably have more optimal energy. Again, it's finding what works for you, but I find generally just eating enough or just below enough is what will really fuel you and you'll get you'll you'll have abundance of energy after that meal it's when if you're tired after a meal you've eaten too much okay or the wrong type of foods again it could be one or the other or you could be just out of the circadian rhythm (laughs) or you could have low cortisol there could be a number of factors again i'm just talking generally here um, I don't know your personal circumstances. And my last point here is not to eat too much, not to eat too little, just right. Remember the Goldilocks principle, so important for optimal health and well-being. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Power of Food presentation. Again, it was general. It was high level But again, I see constantly in clinic, this is where people are going wrong. They're not doing the basics right. You need the strong foundations and build on the strong foundations in order to build health success. Start with the foundations, get the foundations right. Remember, we spoke about the basics. It was about, you know, like simply, are you drinking enough water? Okay. Are you moving your body? Are you eating the right types of food, fresh, natural produce, not too much, not too little? Again, eating slowly, eating mindfully, and making sure that you're breathing properly to combust the fuel. You need oxygen to get the combustion, the aerobic combustion of that food and turn it into energy. And that's what you expend, right? So uh, if you wanna optimize your energy, This is a great starting point. Start with the basics. Get the basics right. If you need help with the basics, please book a session with me. I'm going to have a free discovery session link in the show notes. So a free 15-minute discussion with me all on what you want to get out of that session. Nothing about me. It's all about you. 15 minutes of full-on power to help you and start you on your journey. So book in a session with me if you want further help. 15 minute discovery session. Look for the link in the show notes. I'll include the other links to the episodes I also mentioned in the show notes. And leverage food for your optimal health and well being. Get the most out of your food by getting the basics right. This is the final closing comments of the Power of Food episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly really enjoyed sharing the information with you. If you think of anyone that could really benefit, anyone you know that could benefit from getting the basics right, optimizing their consumption of food so that they get optimal energy output. So anyone you know that's drained and not getting the energy that they desire or feeling run down and tired, then this is an episode that would really help them. So please share it with them. Also, leave a comment, leave a review. That really helps me get it out to more people. I ultimately want to enhance and enlighten the well-being of others and i'd love you to share the information if you found it of value because i'm sure someone else will find it of value so thank you very much for tuning in to another insightful episode of me and my health up podcast disclaimer this podcast and any information advice opinions or statements within it do not constitute medical healthcare, or professional advice and are provided for general information purposes only All care is taken in the preparation of the information in this podcast. Connected Wellness Proprietary Limited, operating under the brand Me and My Health Up, does not make any representations or give any warranties about its accuracy, reliability, completeness, or suitability for any particular purpose. This podcast and any information, advice, opinions, or statements within it are not to be used as a substitute for professional, medical, psychological, psychiatric, or any other mental health care or health care in general. Me and My Health Up recommends you seek the advice of a doctor or qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Inform your doctor of any changes that you may to your lifestyle and discuss these with your doctor. Do not disregard medical advice or delay visiting a medical professional because of something you hear in this podcast. This podcast has been carefully prepared on the basis of current information. 
Changes in circumstances after publication may affect the accuracy of this information. To the maximum extent permitted by the law, Me and My Health Up disclaims any such representations or warranties to the completeness, accuracy, merchantability, or fitness for purpose of this podcast and will not be liable for any expenses, losses, damages, incurred indirect or consequential damages or costs that may be incurred as a result of the information being inaccurate or incomplete in any way and for any reason. No part of this podcast can be reproduced, redistributed, published, copied, or duplicated in a form without prior permission of me and my health up.